Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the number one podcast about video game developers and the lifestyle of game developers. My name is Larry Charles. I'm one half of the team bringing you this wonderful podcast. And the guy to my right, the first person to ever say kid tested mother approved for kick cereal, Mr. Brandon Fan. What's up? A fan of kicks and a fan of this podcast are our next guest joining us, Jay Powell. How are you doing over there? I'm going to unmute you and you are on. How's it going, Jay? I, I'm having an interesting couple of days this week, but it's all good. It's just it's completely unexpected, and it's it's a wonderful thing. So how about y'all? Uh, so you hit the lotto, right? That's what, that's what that means. <laughs> unexpected, but completely good. Congratulations, I, I man. The, awesome. I hit the business lotto. Does that count? It's, oh, um, oh, dude. That's even that, better. <laughs> I, I feel like if you hit the business so lotto... We, Less people come looking for money than when you hit the lotto lotto. <laughs> that's, that's, that's very true. I don't have to deal with family this way. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, just as a, a quick intro, I've been on the business side of this industry for 20 years. I oh, was man. the person who landed some of the first deals for uh, people like People Can Fly, uh, Heimamont, Starbreeze, Paradox Studios. Oh, man. I go way back to the 90s when we put stuff in boxes and shoved it on the shelf. Yeah. Um, and then nine years ago, I started a consulting firm where we do just biz dev marketing licensing consulting. We help developers and publishers and conferences and service providers because we track over 600 publishers, another 4,000 plus developers. Mm -hmm. And so we can quickly go, okay, you need a team that can do an iOS game you know, a runner on iOS and we can sort through our tag system and all this back end and spit out a list of it. Um, and then one of the things that's always bugged me, and, and I know y'all were talking about this the other week, is there's no way for developers to learn business. I mean, we have yeah. all of these colleges and universities that send people to school and they're like, we're going to give you a game design degree. And, and those of us in the industry are looking at it going, yeah, let us tell you what that's worth when you come out. The, <laughs> you know, They'll do Save coding itself. and they do art and producing, and, and but they don't do business. Mm -hmm. And so we started our Twitch show uh, about a year, a little over a year ago. Uh, and it's a whole initiative. It's under indie game business. But basically to you know, share these knowledge that a lot of people can't get because they can't afford to go to GDC and, and all this yeah. other stuff. So we go through how to find a publisher, how to qualify that publisher, how to you know, build a community for your game, all the stuff that you don't learn except when you learn it the hard way. And yeah. we're trying to help people not learn it the hard way. Okay, so let me jump in really second, quick uh, while it's hot. What is the name of that show again one more time? Because I need to go follow it. <laughs> Indie Game Business. On Twitch. On Twitch. Okay, There's perfect. There's a YouTube page for it as well, and we are just now getting it moved over to podcast, too. Okay, so, perfect. Um, I, I can send you the links. If I put them in this interview thing, chat, is that going to help? Or I'll yeah. put them in Twitch chat. Uh, That'll help, and we'll also put in the show notes for everybody else. But that content sounds like gold, especially on a regular basis, and it's free. Hell yeah, I want it. Absolutely yeah. free. That's Sorry to like it's, hijack it's, the podcast for my own interest. <laughs> that's pretty much what the podcast is. Yeah, it's, 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 it's wonderful. And that's one of the things. It's like I know how to market games and I know how to pitch studios, but I don't know the first thing about marketing a Twitch show. Mm -hmm. And so it's been just one of those, okay, we'll get the word out here and there. Mm -hmm. So the second half of that initiative was, you know, we, we came, we, we looked at it and we said, okay, so we've solved, well, we haven't solved we're doing our little part to solve the problem of, you know, studios can't get, you know, the education that they need. Yeah. And we're doing that with the Twitch show and the podcast. So the other half of that is developers can't go, you know, get these business meetings with publishers or with marketing firms or with service providers because, you know, they're halfway across, you know, GDC is out in San Francisco. If you're there all week, you're probably going to drop five, $10,000 between mm -hmm. flights, hotels, passes to the show, all food, Uber, all of that sort of stuff. You know, then you've got Gamescom over in Germany. You've got E3 in LA. These shows are expensive. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. And so we said, why don't we just take the travel out of that? And so we partnered up with Meet to Match, and they do the matchmaking for DevCom and Nordic Game Conference, and they had an area over at GDC this year. But when you sign in to Meet to Match, you can basically look at everybody else that's registered. And if it's a publisher, they're like, okay, we are so-and-so publisher, this type of game that we're looking for, and these are the kind mm -hmm. of meetings I want to have. So you don't need to cold call anyone. You don't need to wonder if that publisher wants to you know, is interested in your game, you can immediately see it, you send them a meeting request, done. And so at a oh, show really? that works out where you send that meeting request and then it says, okay, here's where you're gonna meet. Well, we just simplified it. And then so you send that meeting request and it says, here's the video link. Yeah. And so there you you know, go. when it's time for your meeting, you just click the link and go to, go to voice chat. Oh, I like so that. So that's the, the long version Friday afternoon, actually, it was more like Friday night. I had the brilliant idea of making a post on LinkedIn and saying, hey, look, we've got we track all these publishers. We've got a list of 500 publishers. Drop a link in the com we drop a comment under this and I'll send it to you. Oh, that was it. I was like, OK, it's Friday. It's LinkedIn. Nobody goes on LinkedIn in the you know, on the weekend anyway. Um, as of this morning, it's got 80,000 views. And we've had over 700 requests for this document. 701, because so, I'm going to add my name as soon as we're done. <laughs> <laughs> I have been doing nothing over the weekend and yesterday and up until now today, except copying email addresses and putting them in the list of people oh, that it's going to go to. And so it's it's wonderful. And I just get up in the morning and start chuckling because my, I have boring business posts, you know, mm -hmm. I have, you know, maybe some tips here and there along the way, my posts on LinkedIn get 200, 300 views. And now it's 80,000. It's, it's crazy. It's, it's yeah. ridiculous. It's, um, but it's good. I mean, that's what we want to do. We want to get the word out about this thing. Um, then, so I can, I'll send you guys the list as well. I'll tell you the cheat sheet. If you just oh, go yes. to our website, Okay. www.powellgroupconsulting.com a pop-up will come up and say you know give us your email and we'll send it to you and that'll automatically do it so oh, nice. if you need it like right now or you need it those of you who are listening later and i'm not following i'm not on that thread in, in linkedin anymore just go to our site can you do you mind spelling it really quick just for the people who are driving um p-o-w-e-l-l -L group consulting okay so powell group consulting at powellgroup.com no it's, it's just www.powellgroupconsulting.com oh okay, the website so the consulting as well there we go powellgroupconsulting.com perfect well you're bringing up like a, a very important subject that i think all developers would always want to lend their ears to is because uh you come from a marketing background, but this whole social media influence type of behavior, type of like uh, uh, market share, right, is something that every developer is trying to get into slowly but surely, asking and, and just trying to break it through to create an audience so that you know it's easier to get their message across. Yeah. What has been the hardest thing about it, uh, besides the commitment time, but what has been the toughest? nut to crack about this since you you have a marketing diploma mm -hmm. like you actually have the chops <laughs> but this whole thing is like a, a different like you got to get like the from the 12 year olds to the 30 year olds mm -hmm. to somehow tune in more than two minutes uh and and, and, and kind of so, listen to your message are you, are you talking about on the uh on the podcast side um, yeah just the social media part because that is completely new in the last few years and of course, the youngins have a better handle than us, right? Um, yeah, and I didn't realize how big a deal it was. So before we started doing the show and obviously this event, and by the way, I'll send you all a link for a discount for mm -hmm. your viewers for the, nice. the show hey. as well. Hey, yep. um, Congratulations, listeners. Yeah. <laughs> But that's why we're doing this. It's like, you know, it doesn't do me any good if if I tell all these developers we're going to help you and then none of them show up, you know. So mm -hmm. um, we before we started doing the show, 
me being the business guy, I'm like, okay, so how do people consume knowledge? Well, white papers. People like white papers, right? Mm -hmm. We wrote all of these white papers. Nobody read them. Nobody <laughs> we gave them away. We, you know, did all this other stuff. Nobody read them. And then we did a big, uh, about once a year, we'll do a, a big uh, survey to the industry, you know, mainly developers and publishers, find out what they're looking for, what their concerns are, you know, if it's changed in terms of the games that they're publishing, if it's a publisher, all of that sort of stuff. And so one of the questions that we put on there was, how do you prefer to consume knowledge? And it was like overwhelming. I want to say it was like 60% or maybe even higher said video. And I'm like, yeah. I mean, I'm mm -hmm. 42. I didn't grow up on the YouTube world. I did, mm -hmm. and, and I'm like, are you serious? People like sit down out of their day and they take time to, you know, start watching this stuff. And so I kind of just dismissed it for a little while, but then it was like, <laughs> okay, what's the, <laughs> how are we going to get this stuff out there? I guess we're going to do video. So it's, you know, we don't have a big social media marketing team over here. Mm -hmm. um, the folks over at Vicarious PR have been fantastic in helping us with the event. Um, but I basically use, you know, tweet deck and, and, a thing called crowdfire to do mm -hmm. our social media and it is i mean it's it's it, it's been very tough to get the word out because there are so many podcasts and there are so many twitch channels but you know we're sitting over here going we're doing something new nobody's mm -hmm. doing this mm -hmm. and it, it you know falls on deaf ears most of the time so um that's the biggest thing you know in terms of getting the the information out there you know it's just simply a matter of you know, letting people know it exists in the first place. Yeah. No, we definitely share. Yeah, we know. That we know because we didn't do video <laughs> until recently, yeah. like, a, like a month and a half ago, because we did the audio podcast for three years to build up that kind of just reputation, but also the style, like just figuring out the, the patterns that we or click with our audience, the formats. And once we were comfortable, and a lot of it was – us being in the same location, like obviously we were working at different studios yeah. at the time, uh, different parts of California, yeah. and then finally doing this full time. Same place, same time. Has allowed us to be consistent with the daily shows and everything that we've always wanted to do. But now, honestly, uh, I, I think it happened at the right time, right? The consistency was enough there. We're just frequently doing it more now. And, uh, it, I think those three years was a uh, good practice for us to come to this point because we're a lot more comfortable now than before. But uh, yeah, we're right there with you, man. We're having to go through and figuring this out. Yeah. Uh, and, and, and just just being consistent and being okay with no one watching. As long as it's out there, people who are looking for it will eventually find you. Yeah, that, I guess so, me personally, that helps me save some graces. Like if you know you've put an hour into something that no one is going to see at the time that you've done it, yeah. but you at least get some sleep knowing that, yeah, but now it exists yeah. on a platform where yeah. it will always yeah. be and people can find it through SEO. I can share it, yeah. things like that. So it's not an immediate waste of time if you consider the long tail of the it's process. It's a long tail discovery. game for sure. Yeah. yeah. See, I had no idea. You know, I had watched Twitch like casually every now and then. And, yeah. you know, when I woke up that morning, I'm like, we'll do a Twitch show. And I was like, yeah. I have no idea how to do a Twitch show. <laughs> so I called Dan Long, who goes, you know, he's indie on Twitch. Mm -hmm. And I had met him several months before. And I said, look, I have an idea for this thing, but I have no idea how to do it. Will you mm -hmm. help? And he's like, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, without his help on the, the technical producing side, I would have never, they, no telling. We probably still be writing white papers. Um, but, you know, he's Shout out to Dan. And that was one of the first things he told me. He was like, don't watch the viewer count. But I'm like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> he goes, because whether you have a lot of people or you have nobody, you just want to act like there's a lot of people there. Mm -hmm. like, that works. But yeah, like that's that. what we do the same thing. Like and, you know, tough trying to find that, that groove. But I mm -hmm. think we've got it now as well. Yeah. But that's the... I admire the fact that y'all are doing this full time now because these these shows and this podcast, you know, I tell a lot of our guests, I'm like, this is the most fun I've had in a decade. Oh like, yeah, doing this stuff. So. Definitely for sure. <laughs> like uh, yeah, like the ability to to do anything, not just these shows, like the ability to kind of call the shot, mm -hmm. 
where 100% of the failures and success on is, your shoulders. is on your shoulders. I mean, I love that type of risk taking. But a lot of percentage of people don't. They just like to just clock and clock out and, and, and live their life after the fact, um, which is fine too. So it does take like a particular breed yeah. to shoulder this and be okay with everything that comes with it. Um, yeah, we need more people like that within the game industry for sure. It, it, once you make that step the first time, and the, the Powell Group is my second company, and it's it just turned nine this year. But for three years before that, I had started another startup with two friends of mine that we all worked together at the first place I worked through for mm-hmm. nearly a decade or, or a decade. Once you take that step the first time and you understand that, you know, your days of a, a regular paycheck are, are shot. Mm. And here in the U.S. anyway, you're probably either not going to have insurance or you're going to have crappy health insurance you mm. know, because you, you're running a company. It gets a lot easier after that. You know, once you get through that first phase of, you know, realizing that you're doing a startup and that it is on you, because I'm like, I'm like you guys. It's like, I like that weight on my shoulder if, you know, we don't have food on the table. That's my fault, you know. Mm-hmm. And if we got the same for for our team as well, and you know, I started worrying a whole lot more about the business when I started. You know, we started bringing people on, and, and it's like, okay, it's not just me anymore. It's mm-hmm. you know, there's other families that are relying on us, you know, to mm-hmm. get this done now. Mm-hmm. But it, it's I, I wouldn't trade it for the world. It's it's I, I love it. Especially yeah. when you hit the lotto. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll see. We're going to make sure something monetizes out of that first. But yeah. in the meantime, you know, I'm, I'm still like copy pasting, copy pasting, copy pasting email addresses. It's okay, man. So it's okay. What are, I'm going to flip it around and ask you all. Uh-huh. What are the Interview biggest time. issues that you see with developers in the industry? And, and what kind of barriers to their success are you hearing? All right, Larry can. Oh, uh, sure. I can go first. <laughs> uh, where I sit as a developer myself, who's also in the industry, but I'm on the indie side now, I'll say is like discoverability is always my biggest fear of like, all right, I have this great thing, but so does everyone else. Mm-hmm. And we're all yelling in the same room as loud yeah, as we yeah, can, yeah, yeah. trying to get the hot girl attention or trying to get just the people in the room to give us the attention and not the other people's attention mm-hmm. or support us all or whatever. But yeah. Knowing that, like, I need to find a way to make a boom fast for cheap and be profitable, Mm -hmm. get as many people as possible who could like my product to find my product. Discoverability is always that, like, even if I have everything else right, if I don't have a way to get the word out to the people who should be hearing it, it might have all been for nothing. Mm -hmm. And so I think that more than anything, I think that that's the thing that stays on my mind the most right now, even more than like making a quality product. Mm -hmm. It's like, even if I had a shit product, I still want to know what I can do to try to boost my skills in getting people to pay attention to what I'm doing. Yeah. Like I tell Larry all the time, hey, can, we're, we're in. Shit product and make money. I, I've seen it. <laughs> I see it all the time. Dude, we're, we're past that now. Yeah. We can, you can sell a no products, yeah. right? Fire Festival, right? But we don't want to <laughs> encourage true. that type of behavior. behavior. Yeah. But that that proves, if anything, as long as you have a good marketing and, and, and enough people to believe into this false product, you can make money and be successful at it as long as you don't get caught, right? Mm-hmm. Of course, we're not we're, we're brushing for people to actually deliver yeah. the product. He's not suggesting. I'm not suggesting. He's just making an observation. I'm making an observation. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, I agree with Larry. It's a great game. It's called Pyramid Scheme. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the, 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 how do you play this? You put you <laughs> Well, first you need to get some friends. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Exactly. It's multiplayer co-op. Yeah. But I agree. I sign off with what Larry is saying. I think developers, their biggest problem right now is uh, they're so, I think, if they're not any developers, they're most likely working at a company. And working at a company, um, most likely they're becoming more and more pigeonholed and specialized, that they're slowly becoming unaware of the opportunities that are happening around them. Everything and everybody outside of the game industry wants game developers right now. It's a booming, huge business. Uh, what we are offering on the real-time front is everybody that is utilizing technology wanting a piece of it. And they are completely from the ground 
know nothing about real-time development. And so I see that issue has been building up the last few years. It's like we're a very hot com commodity, yeah. but we have no idea how to uh, s spread our skills to other industries and, and, yeah. and know even anything about it, right? And uh, I, I, I feel a lot of those times um, developers are just screwing themselves mm -hmm. by kind of being closed off from the, from the world. I mean, what do you think? The most frequent <laughs> email message, phone call that I get that I can't help with is the developer that calls me and says, our game is launching next week and we have yeah. no budget. Can you help us market it? Yeah. No, <sighs> there's just nothing. May God have mercy on your soul. There's nothing I can do for you. Yeah. There's nothing anyone can do for you. Yeah. The good yeah. news is one that that hasn't changed in 20 years that's still mm -hmm. the same issue that i saw when i first started it's it's developers don't have the mentality of this is actually a business if mm -hmm. you don't make money on your game you're gonna have to go get another job while you make your next game mm -hmm. and you know we've had several guests on the show that have you know emphasized over and over it's like the minute your game has a screenshot to show you need to start you know building that audience you don't need to start buying ads on facebook and and you know twitter and instagram or anything but you need to start building that audience yeah. and justin french had a great article on gama sutra a few weeks ago talking about how to you know especially early on drive everybody to your discord and use discord as your you know community hub so to speak mm -hmm of you know, of marketing so um but i agree it, it's it's getting developers to understand that you can't just make a great game you have to make a great game and tell everybody about it yeah. mm -hmm. i i would even add on to that and say before you even finish making that great game yeah. <laughs> tell people about it like it's insane oh, that yeah. how I mean, yeah good. yeah how, how many people would just completely I, th I think it is exactly what you're saying. It's, it's like financially irresponsible for people, for creatives to go in a room and just make that dream project they've always wanted to make and believe that once it's out in the world, people will come like Noah's Ark or something, yeah. right? It's so irresponsible. And I hope that a lot of those guys or women are providing for their family because it's, in, it's, it's so irresponsible to think that that way about business and i guess what bothers me when i think about it now is it, it feels like people aren't on the pulse yeah but they call themselves businessmen or businesswomen or business people right to yeah. say that like all we gotta do whenever i hear all we gotta do yeah i like I'm, in my mind i've already <laughs> folded my arms and i'm like all right here it comes but apple's gonna feature us yeah yeah exactly <laughs> it's uh, it, it, like I, I hate when people get out of touch or are out of touch and don't know it or don't try to do anything about being out of touch right like aren't surveying the market and seeing like wow it's very difficult or the cost to acquire each customer is like super high right now what creatively can we do to yeah. try to mitigate that like like we started a podcast three years ago and this is this is true facts we want to make and sell games and we're like well let's start this podcast and build a community who get to know who we are we'll even give them value by interviewing guests by offering our opinion by doing all this great stuff who knows when the game part will actually come through but like by the time we get to that point imagine where the audience will be yeah we we were making the bed before we lay yeah in. we because we've seen three years we've been through the trenches right mm -hmm. we know how it works we've seen our friends go we've seen game. our friends go game and we're like jealous at first and then about a year later we're not so jealous <laughs> because they completely fucked up, right? Uh, but we've seen, even with the podcast being kind of like the, uh, it's not even a Trojan horse. It was seriously us like yeah. paving a way for building a community, but asking the es experts such as yourself mm -hmm. to like kind of, how, how do we dodge these, these areas yeah. without fully committing to it first and learning from that and, and, and people who've done it. Right. And uh, I feel a lot of developers just completely skip that step. Yeah. And let's say if we start at the same time, they are starting to finish their game and have not told anybody about it. 
and it's it's crazy it's yeah. crazy to think that they would be able to come out with something and everybody would buy yeah. or pay any attention to it that's why i really want to highlight your twitch show because and all the content that you're involved in because when i think about it like you have a team of creatives yeah. no matter how talented they are if the goal is to be creative and be lucrative at the mm -hmm. same time who on that creative side actually has chops in business, business development, marketing, social media, advertising, or any of the other half of the release plan, mm -hmm. right? You can't just have the team of juggernauts that are like artist, designer, engineer, sound guy, you know, whatever, producer. We have this titan team. Not one of them has any idea how to, where to, or how much to get information out there that will actually bring people in that are interested in buying that thing. Mm -hmm. It's you may well, as well you shoot solve yourself. That problem oh, go ahead. Completely, Larry, then I won't have a job. <laughs> That's the problem. <laughs> He's like, Larry, but you're I talking about my people. Twenty years. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, it, it, but that's it. It's it's we are as an industry tuned to think of what we do as art. I'm not saying yeah. it's not. I'm just saying that's the mentality that we yeah. have, mm -hmm. and with that comes the whole if i make something pretty or if i make something engaging and mm -hmm. fun people will automatically come to it and it's not true and, and it gets back to the fact that no one teaches and reinforces this early on in the, in the industry i mean mm -hmm. when they're coming in for the first time i was very fortunate i got a job where i was you know, I interned for a little bit at this company and then, you know, we were an agency back in the day. And so we represented developers who needed publishers or, you know, back then publishers who needed distribution outside of North America or whatever their country was. That's how I ended up working with Patrick Soderlund and Dice. Like, God, I went back when E3 was in Atlanta. I mean, I don't even remember how far <laughs> back that was, mm -hmm. but if, if there was some education along the way, and, and I'm on the advisory board for one of our local, you know, community colleges that has a small game development program. And that was the first thing when, when they sent over the curriculum, they're like, this is what we teach. What do you think? And I'm like, I can't comment on the art and coding side because I don't mm -hmm. know art and coding, but I can comment on the fact that you don't have a single business thing in there, a marketing mm -hmm. thing, or even producers, yep. you know, so, it's learning how to effectively manage a team and produce a title is extremely important as well. And we do see that taught not as much as the code and the art side, mm -hmm. uh, but infinitely more than the business side. Yeah. It's, I find myself as I mature <laughs> as a developer that I've, I'm deeper and deeper excited about the business and marketing sides of game development yeah. because of how much, I think that I can see that it directly affects the success of what I do. Right. I feel competent in my design skills. I feel incompetent in where I should be in my business skills. Mm. And so, yeah, like Brandon was saying, like a lot of this podcast helps us leverage our own career paths by saying like, hey, we're going to bring on an expert who knows about law, mm. who's going to help us avoid some pitfalls that we may encounter when we start our business. Hey, we're bringing on an expert now who knows about business marketing, business development, who's going to help us avoid some pitfalls when we try to grow the business that we plan on starting. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, I know that our school prepared us to be content creators. Yeah did not prepare us whatsoever to ever think about even taking the step into studio owner, yeah. you know, co co-founder yeah. or, you know, a partner executive, even on any sort of publishing end or anything like that, anything to do with Excel. They mm -hmm. never, never went through our school <laughs> curriculum. <laughs> Don't yeah. worry. I hate Excel. Um, <laughs> what we tell people is, you know, we can't prevent Activision EA, you know, t what happened at Telltale last year, yeah. there's nothing we can do to prevent that. That's going to always happen. What we can do is give those developers who, you know, lost their jobs and were laid off, give them the tools that they need mm -hmm. to not be reliant on that predatory AAA industry. Mm -hmm. And so that's all that, you know, it's like, that's all we can do, but we're going to help you right there. You know, we mm -hmm. can't, keep you from getting laid off because EA stock dropped three points last week, but you know, we can help you. Yeah. Well, 
there's one thing that I know about game developers, right? Is that like, there's never a challenge too great. And there's so many things that come our way when we try to go on the business end. You know what I mean? Things that are just unexpected. Things that just kind of pop up out of nowhere that you have to be prepared to handle. And so one of the ways that I kind of gut check the guests that we bring on the show is I ask them if they want to play this game called The Fast Five. <laughs> It's where I ask you five rapid fire questions and you give me five rapid fire answers. And, you know, it's just a, a great little way for us to like break up the podcast a little bit, but also get to know you on a different level than the main topic that we're talking about. So you're up against some heavy hitters yourself, but would you like to play the fast five? Absolutely. Oh, hell yeah. I love the enthusiasm. You already get two points for that. All right. Question number one. What was the first video game you ever remember playing? Jupiter Lander on the Commodore 64. All right. Question number two. If you could be any fictional character for Halloween this year with the perfect costume, who would you be? Oh, Thor from Endgame. I'm like, I've already got the body style. (laughs) He's like, Larry, I just need the hammer, man. (laughs) I really, seriously, give me a cape, a hammer. I've got the beard and I've got the body style. I'm going to go. The beard needs help, but that's it. All right, question number four. If you were to pick one of your favorite books and had to remove it from your memory altogether just to make sure that you could preserve the memory of every other book that you've read, which book would have to go? Oh, wow, that is a good one. Oh. One of R.A. Salvatore's Drist Drist Duarden books, just simply because I've read so many of them, Mm. and they're so good that I I wouldn't mind reading it again. Okay. Question number four, if there was a fictional universe that you could exist in for a day, I love asking this one, which one would it be? Part of me wants to go fantasy because I've always, you know, I'm much more into the swords and the magic side. But at the same time, they don't have things like toilets. So I'm going to go sci-fi, Star Wars universe. I was never much of a Star Trek kid. So I'll I'll go Star Wars. All right. Then question number five, would you or would you not drink the blue milk? Yeah, I'd drink it. How bad could it possibly be? Luke drank it. Yeah, right Luke drank it. Out of the other. I mean, <laughs> trust me, when I was in college, I drank worse. So, yeah. you know, it'll, it'll be fine. <laughs> Man, that was a good time. That was a good time. Hold on, let me check the stat sheet. Yeah, oh, that's impressive. Even with the little ad libs that we had, you had a, a top twenty time. So congratulations! <laughs> nice. Yeah, we're gonna legitimize this segment. <laughs> we're on video now. Like we need to no, start look, putting. I checked my phone and everything. <laughs> they can't look. Look, see. We there right, it is. we're gonna look. start throwing like a counter up. We're gonna make. Wait, I'm gonna add a transitional. We're gonna legitimize it, right, we'll and we're gonna do, do the top four. five on our Twitch channel so people can keep up. But yeah, I think it is one of our faster times. Yeah, that was pretty good. Yeah. Uh, thanks for playing. See if I know, if I know we're being time, I could have been quicker. But you know, <laughs> I want to see I that clock. I want to see the sweats, dude. Get, <laughs> Half of the I but, derailed constantly. I it's I totally ripped off the like Drew Carey points, but no points from <laughs> whose line is it anyway? That you know the time is like me basically thinking like all right, he was yeah, about rough, yeah. <laughs> rough time. from my memory. You were about yeah, 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 yeah. there. <laughs> so uh, we'll you know right you here. you it's, work it's with like big. A, go ahead. Sorry? No, I can't remember the name of it. The, the show that Clarkson and them were on before they went to Amazon. Top Gear. Where, Top Gear. Yeah. When they just like randomly put cars in the in the in the slots in the cold and hot. That's where we yep. go. That's good. Yep. <laughs> well, uh, so you've been obviously doing this for a long time, and uh, now you're helping indie developers try to catch up, right? Yeah. What are you seeing from the bigger companies that are, that are kind of stumbling right now like we've been seeing a lot of faux pas mm. uh oh yeah he's oh man yes 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 you want to yeah. ask no 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 go ahead you're you opening ask, up yes. a good box all right we've been seeing all these like fumbles major pr fumbles yeah. from big companies who are trying to save face say fuck up? yeah exactly yeah. <laughs> In, instead of do good business yeah. so there's probably like three four questions that we're going to have from you out of this box but let's just start with the I mean, what, what do you do? Is it better to do good business or is it better to just save face? You that know? and when a, a fuck up happens. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Show us some. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us behind closed door the what jig is happens? Up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like the jig is up. How do we spin? Like, can you give us like a little like front row seat to like yeah, yeah. what's going on behind closed door? Because to us, it feels so obvious. Yeah. But it seems like it's more complicated than that. 
it absolutely staggers me how same some of these companies don't realize the basics and, and, and so look, we can start with ea yeah they you know battlefront 2 ended up going so poorly that you know bob Iger, the ceo of disney calls the ceo of ea i mean do you have any <laughs> idea how bad you are fucked up when the ceo yeah. of disney goes hold on a second i need to call these guys yeah they you know they do you know how much we paid for star wars <laughs> and this yes, is what you do exactly. <laughs> almost as much as they paid for minecraft yeah and they it's it absolutely it just it shocks me and, and i think part of it is because these companies get they get tunnel vision they get an understanding of what they're used to what their you know customers want and what fits in their game Mm-hmm. It's not like EA doesn't understand microtransactions. Their FIFA World Team card game in the FIFA game makes them millions of dollars. Dude, but they Pink Diamond can't Ronaldo. seem to. Yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it, they can't seem to move that and understand that. Okay, maybe this game has a different audience, mm-hmm. and they don't want that. And so I was, I was so impressed when you know Respawn launched. Uh, Apex Legends, just like out of the blue. It's like, hey, mm-hmm. here's this, um, you mm-hmm. know, Battle Royale game. And I'm like, and I don't have to build anything. This mm-hmm. is awesome. I'm going to play yeah. it. But there, you know, within a week, you know, I had a post on somewhere and I was like, do not expect Apex Legends to monetize like like Fortnite because they missed the boat. Mm-hmm. You know, they, there was, with the skins and the covers and all the stuff the, that you could buy, there was no way to actually flaunt it. And that's why people buy skins and dances in mm-hmm. Fortnite. Yeah. It's like when you're looking at somebody 200 yards out playing Fortnite, you can tell that that dude's dressed up like Mr. Durberger. Mm-hmm. When somebody's 200 yards out in Apex, you don't know what skin they have. You don't mm-hmm. really care because they're shooting at you and the game's much faster. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, you know, when we see these big studios completely miss the ball on, on things like this, you know, I, I just kind of like sit back and I'm like, who's in charge over there? Mm-hmm. And, and that's one of the reasons why, you know, I get so angry too when I'm watching like live streams on E3 and, and launches and all these fans are like, oh my God, I can't believe they're showing casual indie stuff. This is crap. Show me, you know, <laughs> Call of Duty 41 or whatever we're on. Mm-hmm. And uh-huh. I'm like, if it's not for these indie teams doing this, they're the ones that innovate this stuff. Yeah. You know, they're the ones that, you know, come up with these new gameplay modes and, uh, you know, all of these new mechanics and, and things like that. They're the ones that get it. Mm-hmm. You know, the so, so you want to talk about that? Do you want to talk about Fallout 76? A game that oh, I yeah. absolutely Dude, love. Bro. Let's just go you like, through all. You, like, you, you like Fallout 76? We're, we're, we're going to checklist. We're going to go through these. So. Wait, 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 wait. wait. Let's, not insult- let's, let's not confirm. The game. You like Fallout yeah, 76. I'm not insulting the game. I'm just confirming. Is that what yeah, you I said? I right. love the game. Okay. okay. I've got a lot of hours. Though. Right. Okay. So you've but been I playing. Let me let me guess. Right. Let me guess. And this is not who install or anything. You played every single Fallout. Since me? Fallout 3. Yeah. 3, 4, and 76. Really? You skipped all the other. You just really love 76 then? I, well, no. I got into it with 4. Okay. Okay. I, I, I've never gotten into Fallout before. Now, I, you know, if I ever have time, I'm, I want to go back and play some of the other ones. But mm-hmm. I didn't get into it until four. Okay. And so, part of the ease in me enjoying it is it's pretty much four, except oh, it's got other people in it. So what what you know, went and, wrong with that game specifically? <laughs> oh. <laughs> For, the, um, <laughs> there's two sides of what went wrong. Do you want what went wrong on the technical and release side, or do you want mm. what went wrong on the PR? Let's go through both. Yeah, let's go through, let's both. go through both, man. I'd love to because you being a seasoned player, I am in, thoroughly intrigued in your opinions on this game because I had written it off like. I was like, what? It did what? And it don't, you can't, and what? Yeah, a okay. lot of people did, yeah. All right. Oh, I get a free copy? Like, all right. That lets me know. You guys are like praying for people to play the game. It did. Mm-hmm. And, it, and I think it all comes down to their launch and, and yeah. the fact that their beta like didn't exist. You know, they mm-hmm. did a beta for two weeks. And in the back of my head, I'm like, you know, but that's been around a long time. They've been running. It's not like, you know the, the tre- trepidation you would have is like okay this company does you know huge 
open world RPG single player games, and now they're going to do a multiplayer MMO. That should throw up on the red flags on a lot of people, you know, anytime. But, you know, they have been managing and running Elder Scrolls Online for years. And if you remember, Elder Scrolls Online had the same issues when it launched. Everybody was like, this is stupid. This is an Elder Scrolls. We're not going to do it. We're not going to play it. And it's still going strong today. And if you haven't played Fallout 76 since, you know, last October, give it a try. You know, if you already okay. own it, it's not going to cost you anything else to play it anyway. But Fair you know, they have improved a lot of stuff in it. But, you know, even today in the patch, or I was reading some patch notes maybe last night, and, you know, they're talking about how they're going to ease players into the world a little more by... You know, you're not going to catch diseases until like level 15 and, and your food's going to, you know, erode and decay slower. And every I'm sitting there looking at that list going every single thing in here should have been caught in a real beta. You know, mm. if they did look at how long Blizzard runs, you know, closed betas, open betas yeah. on Warcraft. Yeah, you know, WoW they, Classic they has been in those. beta. It feels like a month and a half, maybe two months now, yeah. something like that. Mm -hmm. they and then it doesn't launch till eight long. something, eight twenty seven or something like that. But you know, they didn't do it with Fallout. It, it was like, okay, let's get this thing out here. Mm -hmm. You know, in October, basically, let's beat Thanksgiving. You know, yeah. Which, which comes to my classic rules of purchasing games: never ever buy a game during the last two weeks of a quarter. Mm -hmm. and think really hard before you buy a game in November or December mm -hmm. because there's a high probability, you know, one, they're coming from AAA studios. Mm -hmm. There's a high probability it may not quite be done, but, mm -hmm. you know, somebody over in accounting goes, we need to ship this thing yeah. yesterday yeah. to hit our quarterly numbers. Yep. And, you know, you, you end up with stuff like this. But, you know, they, they didn't do a good job on the community management side. They, they should have cooked it a little longer, basically, mm -hmm. because it is at its core, it's a good game. Okay. You know, it's it's Fallout Four, you know, it's it's that kind of. The graphics are there. You can even use mods in it, which you know, how often do you see that come out of a, a, a multiplayer game? Yeah. Um, but yeah, when it first came out, it was a dumpster fire. <laughs> Man, well, I'm I'm well, actually so happy to hear that. Oh, <laughs> well, so, well, like last week, uh, GTA, GTA. We we just finished talking about that games recap. Oh We'd love God. to know your opinions about that. Yeah, if you okay, Are, so if, have y'all gone up to and including the emails that went out yesterday that one? Yeah, yeah, we yes. just looked at that too. Yes. Like, what is going on? Okay, like, so is this just literally one guy just like thinking that this is the best move? Is, is it a committee of people that thought these were the best moves? Like, what would be happening right. of that? At oh, that level. Hold on, let me look. Let me ch let me check my little secret database here. <laughs> we don't deal with with G two A. Yeah. Um, but let me yeah, see. They're not on the people. list of publishers. Five hundred publishers no, minus G two A. They are actually classified as a distributor. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm system. just using Makes sense. And they uh, we don't have a single contact over there. Um, mm -hmm. So I was wondering how big it, it might be, mm -hmm. but you know. G2A has has been an issue in the industry for years. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Larry, you talk about things to tell developers, you know, mm -hmm. up front. And, and it's one of the things that we, you know, preach constantly. You can't, and I had a developer do this to me the other week. You know, I guess they were just like searching game development, Twitter, Twitch shows. Mm -hmm. And, about once every three months this happens somebody sends me an email completely cold and it says i hope you'll play our game on your stream here's a code for it <laughs> and i'm like okay one you've never seen our stream yeah. because <laughs> we don't play games on it we may every now and then we have a guest on that has just released a game and, and indy will play it in the background while mm -hmm. you know we're talking to them but we're not a a let's play a yeah, game you know, streamer. Let's sit down and do this channel. But two, when you blanket, you know, codes out like that, that's how they end up on the black market, mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. black market, gray market, whatever you want to call it. 
that's how it happens. So we're, we constantly uh. tell developers, you know, don't send a code out, you know, unless you're using something like Keymailer or Woovit or, oh, what's the third one? There's another one, you know, that does this too. And, you know, you'll see PR people talk about how, you know, you should go and double check their emails and, you know, make mm. sure that it, the email matches up exactly to what's on their YouTube site. And that's good advice, but that gets time consuming. That gets very, very time consuming. It's just easier to use Bluevit or Keymailer or, or one of these services to manage that for you. Because mm -hmm. yes, it's going to cost you a little bit of money, but it's going to save you a lot of time. Um, and so, you know, the, all of these codes end up over there. And so it's causing problems far beyond what you see in the news. So all these indie companies are, you know, ranting to G2, G2A to take them off their server. They're not, so one, they're not going to do it. They're, mm -hmm. they're, they have no incentive to do it. They can, they've gotten bad press for a decade. They're not unaccustomed to that people just keep going to it and buying it because it's there and it's cheaper yeah. than buying something straight on steam yeah. or, or catch up people <laughs> yeah and, it's, and then you know you have this thing like yesterday and, and i got up in the morning and i checked twitter and I, and I just started laughing i'm like there's no way in hell this actually happened and i'm like looking for the tweet where somebody's like yeah it'd be funny if that actually happened but there no is plain print we've written a what did they say we've written a unbiased, unbiased article about article. how our system works would you run it on your on your web page but not as sponsored or promoted content we want it to look like an editorial and i'm like <laughs> i sit around and, and watch you know read the news you know the real world news not our news yeah. and politicians are the worst about it you know it's like how do you not understand social media how do you not understand the internet how if you said something into a camera last year and then you say something completely different this year people are going to catch that you know if what you put on the internet is, is forever why in the hell would you email that you know that letter to anyone because you have to know it's going to get put on the internet. It's, it, you know, you, you're not going to be able to get away that scot free. And, you know, their, their corporate's like, oh, it was a rogue employee and they weren't trained properly. <laughs> well, we but it, it is possible. But, if anything, they shown it, it is possible that the, this <laughs> person did not think that anybody. <laughs> he must have emailed well, it to 20 that's outlets. Very possible. <laughs> but first, I can't. I can't. It's the point of, it's a special it's type of person, right? Like, yeah, it's a special type of person to not think the second step through. That if I send this email, there's a possibility that the media, the twenty media outlets that I, I sent a check to, would turn this into a story, right? Mm -hmm. yeah, but like, do you really think right. this was a rogue? Really, any chance a rogue employee just going above? his paycheck no. to do this on his own? I think it was a regular employee that was doing what they've always done and, and they thought it was normal and it would be okay. You know, mm. it was, look at who they deal with. All right, yeah. So, you know, we as developers have issues dealing with Steam because, you know, Steam is as big as they are and they yeah. do things the way that they want to do it and that's kind of like the end game. You know, that's... Mm. Now we're starting to see changes in that since Epic came in and started, you know, chunking $40 million wrenches and everything. <laughs> but you know, G2A, they don't deal with developers as much. Their main line of communication is to their to their users, you know, to, mm -hmm. to the people, their customers, people that come there and purchase. So it doesn't shock me at all that they don't have that internal knowledge base of oh wait we probably shouldn't ask people to do this because somebody is going to turn around and you know bust us on it mm -hmm. if what you if you know somebody that would do what you wanted them to do you pick up the phone and you call them and you ask them you don't put it in writing you know that's that that's it that's the end of it you can always deny something that you said in a phone call mm -hmm. you can't deny it when the email is sitting there you know on a screenshot mm -hmm. 
Oh, the good old deny, deny. It wasn't me. <laughs> it was me. Saw me emailing Kataka. <laughs> it wasn't me. <laughs> so where are you all on the Epic Store? I'm all for it. I love competition, and I it boils yeah. back down to Pepsi Coke for me. Yeah. Uh, as long as they're in competition with each other, the consumer wins, regardless which one that I actually prefer. Because there's somebody else for them to compete against, it creates a check and a balance in the free market. Yeah. So yeah, Epic is doing what they're supposed to be doing. I don't think there's anything wrong. With I agree. Epic. Yeah, I think the the the, the par- and they actually made good do with uh, fixing a problem that wasn't even theirs, like mm-hmm. the Shenmue people yep. backers complaining about how it's not available on Steam. That's the developers. So somehow the developers are hilarious. yeah completely just like out of the equation. Those shitty developers just like uh, backtracking this whole deal. I'm gonna bitch and cry because you know you promised me on Kickstarter. Okay, so yeah. one, let's run a quick list of things that were promised on Kickstarter that haven't happened. <laughs> but you know, two, when when Tim came out and said, okay, all right, whatever. If if you didn't want it on, you know, if you absolutely had to have it on Steam and nowhere else. We'll refund your money. Yeah. That is like the biggest, you know, million dollar bluff call yeah. that I have seen in a long time. Because mm-hmm. it's like, okay, now what? Now what do you have to complain about? Yeah. Like the fact that you know Steam isn't paying to get these things. Yeah. People, I mean, y'all have been doing this for a long time. People forget that platform exclusives are what move units. Yeah. You know, this is when was the last time you played Mario Kart on your PlayStation Four? Yeah. It never, never. You know, it's it's you know, and, and people are like, well, they own that. And it's like there's no difference. Yeah. You know, if if you want something to, if you want to stand out from the crowd, you've got to have engaging, exclusive content, and that's yeah. why you know we see all the stuff about subscription services. And I'm not bullish on Google's Stadia. Stadia. You know, oh. You, uh, no. <laughs> Who's going to pay $150 for something that they can play on their existing PC or console? They don't have that engaging exclusive content. If they yeah. do, that changes. Yeah. But they yeah, won't. Nobody, <laughs> no, I don't think they will. Nobody buys Netflix and subscribes to, you know, Netflix so they can watch Friends. They do yeah. so they can watch, you know, Black the Marvel Mirror. shows or, or yeah. Orange is the New Black and all of that sort of stuff. So it's, I I get a, I get a kick out of people, you know, complaining about the Epic store and I'm like, this is how it's been done. Yeah. Always. Right. Back to the Google thing though. Like Google to me always has like this idealistic, uh, announcement that gets people excited and you just slowly weeks after towards the launch, just see them killing their baby. (laughs) It sounded like a great idea at first. Either they're like suffocating it and then like letting it breathe for a second. And then yeah, it again, you know? it's, it's for them to come out with a hundred and fifty dollar hardware to buy into a system. It was it's so dumb. Now they're you're coming out with a console, which is the one thing that you were trying to avoid the whole time. It's like let me go on my PC and play on your system. There was no reason to own anything. Yeah, much much that, less than a thing. controller. Yeah. You know, something like that has to hit mass market to do well. Yeah. Mass market isn't going to pay 150 bucks. Yeah. You know, the early adopters, I mean, they're going to sell hardware. They already have. You know, people yeah. are, there are people that are going to buy, you know, that $150 hardware. Yeah. But yeah. what I think is going to happen is not enough of them are going to buy it. No. They're not going to get a good, you know, base to start building from. And then somebody in Google's office is going to go, well, nobody's using this thing. Let's just shut it down. Yeah. yeah. Well, what, what about the games we exclusively uh, are turning into? Oh wait, they're taking five plus years, and it's shit because yeah. that's how game like, business what? works. <laughs> <laughs> they're not going to figure out how to make good games all of a sudden. It takes a while. It's like, but we got Jade Raymond. She's been making all types of games. No, she hasn't. She's a one person. They need to look yeah. Over, you know, across the street at Amazon and see how Amazon has. Oh, I know, right? Failed. Exactly. The for Ten years. People ask me about Google. It's like, yeah, just look at Amazon. They have infinite money and they're closing shop yeah. slowly. So, yeah, they haven't shipped a product that remotely did well. They yeah. can't retain talent, yeah. and there's absolutely, I'm sorry, there's absolutely okay. no excuse for one of the biggest websites, you know, for purchases in the world, to still be a blip on Steam's radar. Yeah, <laughs> you should absolutely 
be owning this market. You've had mm-hmm. ten years to do it, and so mm-hmm. yeah, I'm not I'm not bullish on Stadia. Yeah, I I want the idea of why Stadia exists to be successful because I know that it's an inevitability that we're going to see a shift in game and, and entertainment go towards accessibility yeah. and be less about platform exclusivity and more about just portal exclusivity, yeah. right? Like how I get to my content is the part that Sony owns or Microsoft yeah. owns or Google it's owns. It's going to be Game Pass, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, <laughs> so I'm, ex- I'm just excited to see that future. I have, I mean, I still don't have an, an Xbox One. I've got the PS4 and I've got a Switch, and, but I've always been a PC gamer anyway. I just okay. haven't got around to buying the Xbox. And But when they announced the Game Pass, for PC, PC Game Pass at, at E3, it's like I bought it during the the talk the event. it made total like, oh my sense God, yeah. also yeah you know, click genius you have exclusive content and mm-hmm. you you know i still pay ea you know five dollars a month or whatever it is yeah. for oh, i'm sorry Origin. I, I don't do the premiere <laughs> access but i do the access thing because there yeah. are original games there you know, there yes. are things that i can't do anywhere else yes but, it's very smart you know, yeah don't, don't sit down and try to charge me twenty dollars a month when i can play the same games somewhere else for mm-hmm. what i'm already paying Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. yeah xbox uh is making such a great pivot for their business and finally realizing yo our pc market and console market are the same types of people let's not double charge yeah. them it's like the, the the best move i've seen from a console maker for a long time and that's where i feel like google stadia is just completely not understanding the consumer market i mean their goal is pretty straightforward just trying to get the uh the marketing details from us <laughs> just long enough that they can they can sell that off but uh their pricing points everything about it have been just poor consumer marketing studies it's yeah. like it's not who you're selling this to like i'm not shelling 150 dollars to a non-console market to buy a console guys i thought your whole thing is not to have consoles yeah. <laughs> what am i buying for 150 dollars you idiots <laughs> you're like you're hypocritical <laughs> within your first marketing sentence dude <laughs> what is their marketing sentence? because yeah you know, my main business laptop is a chromebook and i love mm. chromebooks Ooh. and i've had them for you know, 10 years now yeah. because i can do virtually everything on them except play games you know that i need to get done from the business standpoint so absolutely i want them to get this going right so you know i can play wherever i go because i mean that's how i got into this industry i didn't i didn't know the first thing about business you know when i started i, I was a gamer i could sit yeah. down and go that game's good that one's not you know mm-hmm. that sort of stuff but you know that's still why i do this i love this industry i've i have tried to get out or thought seriously and had job interviews about getting out of the industry twice in my career. And it usually lasts like one job interview. And I'm like, oh God, I'll be miserable doing this. Mm -hmm. You know what, I'll go figure it out on the game side again. Because it's, you know, I don't think you do this as long as as I've been doing this and as long as you two have been doing this, if you don't love what we do. Yeah, Yeah, we gotta have a reason to come back for the abuse some way. You need, yeah, exactly. you need that drive. All the crap <laughs> yeah, you need that drive, that motivator that pushes you through the dark times. Yeah, because the the ups are actually very enjoyable. Yeah, the the happy reasons why I make games, the talking to the fans, or reading the comments that are positive, or seeing the people's engagement, or the tattoos of your game logo on their body, like that's like wow, we made something that touched people. Like mm-hmm. this is awesome. Mm-hmm. So, and that's, that's how I feel about this scary. podcast. <laughs> Well, it lets me know that they probably don't make the best long-term decisions, mm-hmm. but I give them credit for their for their fandom. Like if I was rocking a Halo Four tattoo right now, <laughs> yeah, you know, bro, that's gonna be outdated next year. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Anyway, well, I will say this: uh, I have another surprise for you, but this is a much better surprise than a random encounter free game. Uh, we've been podcasting for over an hour, sir. So. That means that Brandon and I are going to take a moment to just get away from the microphones, and we're going to let you talk directly to our audience to shout out, to promote, or raise awareness, or just bring some additional attention to anything you're involved in, something you care about, just anything that you feel currently needs more spotlight than it has. So without further ado, the floor is yours. Oh, that's scary. Y'all, that's a lot of trust y'all are throwing in me. <laughs> it's, it's a lot of power. Like off, off, the, off the bat here. 
So, you know, one for the developers that are out there, you know, I highly encourage you to learn more about the business side of, of, of all this stuff, you know, because it is very important. It is something that, you know, like we said earlier, I don't care how passionate you are about the industry. If you want to do this as your full time job, you're going to have to look at it as a business. It is a business whether you want it to be or not, you know, so, you know, start your marketing ASAP, you know, build that discord community because that's the other thing that I get people coming to us. It's like, well, I'm going to do a Kickstarter for our game. And I'm like, do you already have a community of thousands of people? Because if you don't, then your Kickstarter isn't going to go that well you know, build that from the get go and, you know, start cultivating that audience, you know, and, and then build it, you know, grow it from there. And you're going to have a lot more success a along the way, you know, learn how to be smart with your key codes when you're sending them out. Uh, you know, we've got folks over at, um, at Woovit and a key mailer that we know that, you know, we can put you in touch with. Uh, if you want to know more about what we do, I'm not even worried about the power group side, you know, that's, you know, you can go there. That's our consulting firm. But on the indie game business side, uh, our Discord, if you just go discord.gg slash indie game business and this game business with no S, um, you're, that pops you in our Discord. We've got several hundred people in there. Most are developers, streamers, and publishers. And if you have questions about how to contact influencers or, you know, how you should do a press release and how, you know, all of this sort of stuff, it's a wonderfully safe place to ask it because everyone is there for the same thing. Um, you know, for our show that's coming up next week, I'm just trying to like run through all the marketing points in my head. You can go the easy way to get there. It's on Eventbrite. But if you go to IndieGame.Business, no www, just IndieGame.Business, um, that'll take you to the, the main page from you know, that point where you can buy a, a ticket. And, you know, for you guys, I just like in the last 10 minutes set up a code. So if you use the code game dev unchained, all yeah. caps, then <laughs> you're going to get a 15% discount on the ticket. Um, you know, it, it's one of those things that we want to do what we can, you know, to help the developers. And so, you know, we've got the event next week. We do these things roughly every three months. Uh, we've got the discord. You know, feel free, you know, hit me up. I'm on there. That's actually one of the easiest ways to get a hold of me. Uh, and, you know, we've got the podcast over on anchor.fm slash indie game business. And I saw y'all talking about the other week about the expensive, you know, how expensive podcasting hosting is. Mm -hmm. Anchor.fm is free, it's like 100% mm -hmm. free. There's, I don't pay anything for that. You know, I can't remember how I found it, but, you know, it's there and it's, you know, it's all it's distributed on google all the and apple yeah. and stitcher where is it um spotify. See, apple podcast breaker spot yes yeah, spotify uh, overcast pocket cast radio public and stitcher um so you know it's out there and just bear with us we're getting as many of the episodes up to the podcast as we can but it's just one of those things that it's something else to do during the day yeah. Um, what else we got? If you want that list of publishers, you can either find this ungodly mega thread on LinkedIn, you know, now, or you can just go, if you go to either one of those sites, I gave you the power group consulting.com or the indie game dot business, a nice little pop-up will show up on your screen and says, Hey, sign up for, you know, put in your email address and we'll send you this list. It's the same list. It's the exact same list. So oh, perfect. that's the, that's the way to get it quick. Um, what else is there? If you're putting, I'm just thinking like random nuggets of wisdom to throw out there. If you're doing a Steam game, make sure you get your wish list option up there just as soon as humanly possible. Um, I, it, I'm sure it affects something on, on Steam's, you know, algorithm, but more importantly, Despite all the move and all the growth in social media, email lists are still a really, really, really good way to market. You know, people just look at them like they're, old, you know, that's old news, but they're not. I mean, it's, think about it. 
you know, I got an email the other week that said 28 games in your wish list are on sale. I'm like, okay, well, there goes, you know, that paycheck. But, you know, it's every time you update your pricing, you know, there you go. And, and, and it's going to automatically send something to everybody that's, you know, on your wish list. Everybody that has your game wish list. And it's free. So, mm -hmm. you know, do that. Um, what else have we got? When you're doing your distribution, don't simply count on Steam or, you know, Steam and GOG or whatever. Get your game out there on as many platforms as you possibly can because everybody's got a different audience. You know, there, there's get, set, copies that you can sell on, you know, Green Man Gaming maybe or, you know, Amazon Store that you may not have sold on, on Steam. So, uh, build your distribution as as deep as possible okay mm. that's on top got, of my head and you got one last thing or no i'm sure i've got like 50 last things but you know <laughs> they're all rattling around in there you know, uh, at some point how far along is your game larry uh we have a trailer that we cut and august is the playable demo goal so that's where we are in the process and that's are brandon's game brandon's game or? also it's both oh, of us. Oh, all right. Y'all aren't working on the same game. Yeah. We are. Yeah, we're on the same game. We're on the same oh, game. okay. All right, cool. So are you self-publishing or finding a publisher? Both looking in Which, those options. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's why we're excited. To I have think you. we're just like ready to, because that's the part of the business that we ourselves, you know, we've been in the trenches and we're specializing and we're taught, you know, doing the podcast or we're finding that art, but going through the rounds, being in front of publishers, we have no experience with that yet. And so this is our, our kind of testing mess. So we have to have something in prototype form to finally go out there and like yep. go through it. And then maybe that's when yep. we talk to you about it, yeah. honestly. I'd love to show you. We, we <laughs> won't send you a code. You along the way <laughs> okay. We will, the, we'll... um, you've absolutely got to have a, de a, a demo before you go to that publisher. Mm -hmm. you know, because that's what they're going to ask for anyway. Exactly. Yeah. And, you know, the other piece of advice for developers, whenever you go to a conference, every publisher is going to tell you that your game looks great and they want to see more, mm. whether it does or not. I mean, because unless you're going in with something that's like so off of what their usual customers buy that they're like, I don't even know why you're here. Mm -hmm. But, you know, no publisher wants to be that, that you know, team that sat down and went, yeah, we didn't publish Fortnite because we didn't think it was going to be good. Mm. You know, they want to see everything that they can. So don't get tunnel vision. You know, if you're okay. talking to 15, 20 publishers until that contract is signed and the mm -hmm. money is actually in your bank, don't talking. stop talking to the other 14 or 19 publishers. Awesome. Along That's good the advice. That's great. Advice. Thank you for that last nugget. That's that helps us for sure. And I appreciate that mindset shift because a lot of people are like, yeah, they said they want to see more. It's in the bag. Yeah. Everybody so says they want to see. Everyone more. says that. You know, that. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, all right. Well, uh, thank you so much for joining us on this podcast today. I had a wonderful time interviewing with you and, you know, shooting the shit. It's been a great hour, but I do have to say, judging by the time of day that I can see by the light, I'm Larry Charles and I'm saying good night. This is Brandon Pham. Thank you for joining us this week. And thank you, everyone. See you guys next week. All right. This is where Jay says bye. <laughs> But, oh, I didn't, I didn't know you were waiting for me to say bye. Bye. <laughs>